So the big day has arrived. We are ready to fire up the oven. So it's a very exciting day, very exciting day indeed. A uh, couple of hints, whatever you do, don't try and cook in the oven for the first firing. So it just puts too much pressure on yourself and on the oven itself. So secondly, don't plan a pizza oven party or a pizza party until you have actually practiced with the oven so you know what you're doing. So just a couple of hints there. Right, we're gonna get stuck in and um, talk you through the process. Hello, Kira. My name's Royden from Primal Fires, and today I'm just going to take you through the process of starting one of these ovens up. So essentially, what we're going to do is get the oven used to heat and to drive out any excess moisture that might be left over from the construction process. So if you've broken in an engine before, like an outboard motor or something like that, it's a similar sort of process. You drive the motor at low revs for a series of hours. It just gets all the components settled, and then later on. Once that process is complete, you can rev the engine a bit higher. So what we're going to do is just make a small fire using pieces of wood about that sort of size. Uh, for the first fire, you're going to use about a shoebox full of firewood. And it's just going to be a, a fire that's set up in the middle of the oven. It sort of potters away and gently heats up the oven. Now the process is made a lot easier by one of these. So essentially a uh, little infrared thermometer reader so we're going to be taking readings from the top of the dome and the sides of the dome to make sure we don't get too hot too fast now if you haven't got one of these you can just slowly build the fire up over a series of days now ideally the oven never actually cools down but that's not always too practical um, so if you can do it on consecutive days you'll find that there's retained heat in the oven and you can just stagger the build up and heat Essentially, just imagine a small, gentle, as I say, non-spectacular fire that eases the, uh, the oven into doing its job. So, I'll show you now a picture of the way I've set up the fire. I prefer to uh, set up the fire starter on another piece of wood and then put a larger piece behind so that I can angle pieces of wood up in a sort of building up teepee style fire. Now I'm not too particular about uh, fire starters. Um, I use a kerosene essentially based uh, fire starter, but uh, the purists out there, they use uh, a variety of different things that are perhaps a little bit more organic, so I don't get too fussed about it. Always make sure you've taken the cap off, otherwise you'll uh, you'll start to wonder what you've done uh, as the smoke starts billowing out the front. So an important little start. And um, have a ready supply of firewood ready to go. But don't have the firewood sitting just outside the oven like this. You don't want to be doing that because anything that rolls out could catch that wood on fire and of course spill out everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and light the fire and then I will show you what that fire is doing a little bit later on and how I'm stoking it. Now I got to the end of making the video and I suddenly realised that I probably hadn't paid enough attention to people who may not have one of these. So uh, first of all I'm going to say invest in one of these so uh, look we sell them on our website but they are just so so handy when uh, you're checking different temperatures in this oven so for all your sort of cooking and things like that they're very very handy in my experience way way better than any sort of inbuilt thermometer that the, uh, the ovens might have so uh, yep definitely advocate for these um, if you don't want to invest in one of these if you just want to sort of wing it um, if these ovens are a bit of hit and miss you know that's uh, that's the fun of them um, essentially what you're doing over the process is just small fires that are running for long periods of time and slowly build it up. If you think your fire is too big, there's a strong chance that it is too big. So uh, the written instructions will certainly help you, um, but unless you have one of these, the process is far more hit and miss. If you're investing in one of these and you're not buying one of ours, don't go for anything that measures, uh, that can't go up to 600 degrees Celsius. So. These ovens run a lot hotter than uh, standard ovens, so uh, you certainly need something that can measure up to that range. As you can see, just a small amount of wood. If I take you back here, you'll get a bearing on that, but uh, we have created the fire in the very centre of the oven. Now, when I'm going to be taking readings, what I'm going to be doing is holding the thermometer back and then just putting the little laser light onto different parts of the dome and as I track around what will happen is this little device will tell me the temperature. So you see it's sitting at 16 degrees at the moment obviously because the fire hasn't created any heat uh, but we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. So the fire doing its thing there I want to briefly cover off curing your oven. So 
Uh, within these ovens there are a lot of cement based products, so ordinary, ordinary cement that you get from a hardware store. Now that takes time to cure. Now in summertime that's about 21 days, in winter it's 28 days, just a bit longer in the cooler weather. So it may seem hard after a day or two, but it's not ready to go. So it's going to continue in what's called a hydration process, so it's going to chemically harden over a period of time. If you fire the oven too early, it hasn't come up to full strength. So even though a lot of those cement products aren't getting particularly hot, there's still going to be an element of expansion that goes on in the oven itself, just from that, just from that prolonged exposure to heat. So we have to be very careful that we are leaving the oven for the right amount of time to come up to full strength before we jump in and, uh, and do these firings. So just refer to our instructions, we've got a, uh, a lot of information there on the, the timing of things through the construction process. So this is the uh, first stick up, so the, I let the fire die down and it, it, look it is a bit of an involved process, you've got to come back sort of every 20-30 minutes and just uh, pop a little bit more wood on. Um, actually that wood might look a bit big but I'll just give you uh, the proportions of it, it's actually quite small sections you see that against my hand there. Now just having a look at thermometer, so it's been about uh, 40 minutes or so since we started the fire. So I'm just looking here and perfect. We're sitting about 114, 115 degrees. So that is excellent. We just want to try and maintain that temperature now. So that oven is, uh, is going to slowly but surely creep up in temperature. So after the uh, second stoke up, I'm just going to have a look at the temperature here, and we are rocking at 150 degrees. That, that is absolutely perfect for our first firing. Now remember, I'm only measuring the surface of the, uh, the inner dome, so it uh, will take a while for that temperature to sort of dissipate or move through to the, uh, to the, the full thickness of the mortar. So that's why we're just going to potter away with this really small fire, and bring everything up, but 150 is uh, is bang on for the first firing. So what I want to do is just maintain temperature now, and that's what that essentially a smoky little fire like that is going to do. So it's a really good idea to use your door. Let me just have a look around the side here. You see our fire chugging away there, uh, especially if it's a little bit windy. It just helps sort of contain some of that heat. Um, but we don't want to close it off. We still want uh, plenty of sort of flame going on in the inside. But yeah, your door certainly uh, certainly helps retain and keep that even uh, even heat in the oven there. So welcome to uh, day two of the firing process. So today we're going to run the oven for a little bit longer and a little bit harder than we did yesterday. So our target temperature today is going to be sitting around 175 degrees. It's not a lot, but it's an incremental build up. You'll understand the process now. Uh, we slowly build the temperature of the oven up. We plateau it. Then it slightly drops overnight and then we lift it back up again a little bit higher for longer and we keep gradually building 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 until we're at full firing temperature for the uh, for the oven so I hope that makes a bit of sense um, i'll show you now the temperature that um, we were at uh, so it was looking around 50 degrees which is great and um, the overnight temperature was about five degrees so pretty impressive sort of uh, to, to hold that sort of heat for that long so i'll take you through that now and uh, we'll just take a bit of the temperature reading see what we've got up here so um, yeah, about 50 degrees, so um, that's a good 16 hours since the uh, fire went out, so some good heat retention in there, and uh, that'll be a great little starting point for us to, uh, to light the next series of fires, because it kind of kickstarts the, uh, the oven and then we keep building the temperature from there. So that fire is burning nicely in there, I wouldn't want it to get any bigger than that, and um, if I started to see it getting a bit bigger, what I would do is just take some of the bits of wood and move them to the side. So just spread the fire out so it, um, it kind of slows its burning process down. So I would say that's going perhaps a little bit quick now. So you'll see here what I mean about the teepee uh, style fire. So basically you can see the wood has kind of fallen in on itself and uh, that will continue the burning process without any intervention from me. Uh, some people do use a top down fire, which uh, I'll actually show you next uh, at the uh, third fire. This is the uh, the first stoke up. I've chosen to just spread the fire around a, uh, a little bit. It was burning a little bit hot in one spot, so I decided just to spread it out. So at the moment, up to the first stoke up, we are looking at 140, 150 degrees. So we don't have that far to go, so then it's a matter of just idling everything and, uh, and chugging away. Okay, my fire has died down to basically a smouldering mess. So it's after the second stoke up, and we'll just have a look at the temperatures here. 
Oh yes, look at that, absolutely perfect. So we just want to hover around and um, keep the oven at that temperature. A little bit of a hot spot there, but um, yeah, other than that, that's at the top of the oven there. So I'm just measuring the top of the dome. So we are looking good for the second burning. So uh, that is it for today, really. I'm just going to let that sort of smolder down. Might get a little stoked. Um, we ended up at, where are we at the top? So just under 200, which is perfect. So um, yeah, we'll leave that for today. Let it sort of naturally uh, die down and um, obviously continue the drying process. And that'll be step three tomorrow. One thing I want to briefly talk about is smoke. Uh, so you'll see there's very little smoke coming out of the top of the flue there. So if um, your firewood is dry, you basically should get very little smoke coming out of it. Um, have a chat with your neighbour before you do your firing, because sometimes in like an urban environment, uh, running the fire for a long period of time without cooking any food can annoy your neighbours. So uh, perhaps don't wait for them to put their washing out. Perhaps uh, talk to them the day before and just let them know what you're doing and promise them some pizza at the end of the day. All right, welcome to the third day of firing. We are getting precariously close to cooking up a feed, so um, that's good news. It's a uh, beautiful sunny day, shall we call it, in Tauranga. Uh, yesterday was actually a rainy day, so we didn't get to that continuation that we would normally look for in that firing process, but, but that's okay. We will Today we will gently increase the temperature up to 300 degrees, so we're going to do that over a period of about an hour and a half. And um, then we want to hold that temperature for about three or four hours. So there's a bit of a time commitment. Uh, what we want to do is stoke the fire every sort of three quarters of an hour to an hour. But it's important to hold that temperature for uh, a longer period of time to continue that drying out. So I'm going to take you through a top down fire today. So as I promised, and um, we can have a look at that. And I'll, I'll show you a few temperature readings as we go. So this is your uh, top down fire setup. So what I've got is larger bits of wood down here, getting um, gradually smaller as we get up. I've got a little lighter, half a fire lighter uh, tucked in there, and then one up the top. So what this builds is quite a clean fire. Um, it's also quite a slow burning fire. So uh, the fire will take a, uh, a long, slow approach to burning out. So that's what we want. So we'll have a look at that a bit later on. See just the fire taking off, so um, we are burning from the top, and that will burn down. This is the fire after 30 minutes, so we are burning magnificently. So uh, yeah, that is a good example of a top-down fire. Day three temperature, and we are looking pretty close to our 300 mark. A little bit hot over the top, but the fire is still running, so once that settles down, I'll be fairly confident that it'll be sitting around 300. Now, I've actually changed to a slightly different firewood today, so I had been using avocado and a little bit of pine, but now I'm going to introduce a bit of gum. So, go for something that's a little bit hotter burning, it'll give me a a slower burn, so it won't burn so fast, but it'll produce a little bit more heat. So I'll be able to lift it up to that 300 degrees and sort of hold it. So I've also increased the, the nominal size of wood that I'm using, so uh, that will help us steady the process as well. Well, welcome everyone. We are at day four, which is uh, getting closer and closer to the end result. So. Uh, target temperature today is 350 degrees, so uh, we are getting closer and closer to that sort of magical 400 degrees. Um, you can do a bit of cooking today if you like, so uh, use your imagination a bit. I want to do toasted sandwiches. I want to put a, uh, a pot G in there, so a South African stewing pot, or you might want to cook some sausages on a stick. So uh, no need to let a good fire get a waste. Don't try and do pizza, we're not quite there yet. So we haven't raised the temperature quite enough to get to the pizza level. That'll happen next firing. So fire's going to potter away. We're going to try and keep it going for about three or four hours. And uh, as I said, just hover between 300 and 350 degrees Celsius. It's a guideline. But yeah, uh, the fire was allowed to cool down again. We had three blustery days here. So sort of 30 knot winds. So it's, uh, it's not worth running the oven in there. So I just start the fire slowly, climb it up to that 300 degrees, and uh, we're away. So that fire is burning magnificently there, just to give you a proportion, there is my hand, without catching my hand on fire, but um, it's actually a reasonably small fire, it may look a little bit bigger in the video there, but um, it's uh, got some nice hot embers and it's just going to gently heat that oven up. That is my fire at the moment, so just a couple of bits of wood there chipping away. You'll see a little bit of the soot has burned off on the dome, but um, that was just from the, when the flames licked up. 
Yeah, we'll just check our temperature. Yep, absolutely perfect. So it's a little bit hot holding my hand in there, so I won't do that for too long. But um, yeah, we'll just maintain that temperature and that fire will chip away there. Yeah, I've just stuck a uh, six litre podgy pot in here. Um, put it right up close, so it uh, looks like a massive, but it's not really that big. Um, and we'll just um, check our temperatures. Yep, perfect. So, sitting around at 300, so we're managing to maintain our uh, temperature and uh, actually that fire die down, and this will slowly bubble away and then create a perfect dinner. Let's plan anyway. Uh, at the fifth day of firing, so a very exciting day indeed, our, uh, our last sort of uh, day for breaking the oven in. So what we're going to do today is we are going to gently heat the oven for a period of probably three or four hours and uh, up to a temperature about 400 degrees Celsius. So we're going to gently raise the temperature until the soot that's built up on the inside of the dome burns off. So I'll show you a picture of that in a second, but you'll, uh, you'll know because there's a bit of black smoke coming out of the top of your flue. Once that's happened, what we're going to do is take the fire and spread it around the floor and then we're going to pop the door on and we're just going to leave it. So it's really about winding the temperature of the oven right up and then locking it up and letting it cool down naturally, in which case all the components will dry out. Now just a note on starting your fire, so uh, each time you start your fire, it's, uh, I'll take an analogy of a new car. If you buy a new car and every time you hop in the car and the motor's cold, you just floor it and you go as fast as you can, it's going to reduce the lifespan of the car. So even though these ovens can cope with a bit of punishment like that, if you want to be using the oven in 20 years and you don't want to see any issues over the long, long, long term, then um, it's well worth just taking a bit of time to ease the oven into getting up to temperature. That's especially true if you haven't used your oven for a while, so it might be a little bit damp. Uh, I call the oven sulky. So it's uh, basically the oven getting a little bit annoyed that you haven't used it for a while and um, so uh, it's going to be a little bit slow to come up to the temperatures you want. So if you haven't used the oven for a while and you're having a pizza party the next day or something like that, just have a, uh, a small fire in it, uh, maybe two or three stoke ups, pop the door in front and just leave it overnight and it'll be good to go the next day. Now uh, if you don't have a proper door system and the oven gets particularly wet, you're going to have to go back to the second, third and fourth days of this firing process to drive the moisture out of the oven. So it's quite an important step. Now at this stage uh, you can cook a pizza if you like, but don't try and do multiple pizzas because we're, we're going to wind the temperature up and then we're going to spread that floor out and then let it sort of drop away. But hey, have a go. Why not? Maybe do a cheese pizza for the kids or something to get them excited. But uh, yeah, well, I'm going to show you soon um, us coming up to temperature and what it looks like on the inner dome and then we can go through and um, take a few measurements as well. So this is a uh, visual demonstration of what you'll see when the oven starts clearing itself. So when that inner dome hits 400 degrees you'll see this like blackish smoke coming out through the flue. So that's an indication that you are coming up to temperature. On quite a sort of white light colour which means the soot's burn off so that's great. So we're just going to check the temperature. 400, perfect. Boy, my hand got a bit hot doing that. But um, yeah, we uh, can't really keep my hand in there long enough to take the measure properly. But um, I will pull it back here a little bit and show you what we're doing. So that is the temperature we want to hover around. Okay, right, we have come up to temperature. So you can see the dome is looking nice and white there. Uh, the soot is basically burnt off. So what I've done is I've grabbed my ash rake and I have just spread all the embers and obviously a burning piece around the floor there. So I come back, I've come right up to the start of the arch there. So it's completely covered the floor. And what I'm going to do now is I am just going to put the door on and I am going to just leave it overnight. Simple. Then the job is done. So I've decided just to pop a uh, little roast in there, so uh, you'll see it nicely wrapped up on the inside. I won't be able to touch it in about 30 seconds, but I've just put it in there. So yeah, we're uh, just going to let that potter away and come back and pull it out in about six hours. Okay, just a couple of notes. Uh, you will notice that there is no smoke marks on the front of the, uh, the oven here. So that is one thing, if you are burning nice clean fuel and you're running your fires properly, you shouldn't really have smoke marks up here. Sometimes it's a little bit inevitable, uh, but yeah, essentially if you're running those starting fires right, there should be no markings up here. Uh, the other thing to take note of is that you should never have a fire that's big enough for the flames to lap from the inner dome up into the flue area. So that goes across 
we never use in the oven really, it's just too big a fire for the oven. So uh, these are a cooking appliance, so uh, yeah, just, just uh, be aware of those points. So that wraps up the uh, video on breaking your oven in, so you should be uh, good and ready to go now. I'm going to do a, a few videos on how to cook in these ovens and the type of wood and that sort of thing, so make sure to check those out. Uh, apparently you can press a little like button on the video, so that'll be appreciated. Since please um, feel so free to, uh, to get in touch. Uh, remember your oven is not an incinerator, and um, yeah, love your oven and it'll love you back.